Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Volkswagen Atlas and this has a V6 engine in. Uh, first thing we're going to do is show you how to remove the plastic underneath to access where the filter is at and also where the drain plug is at. Uh, I'll be going through that. Uh, the oils we'll be using today will be the Amsoil European car formula. The specification for the oil on this uh, engine is a Volkswagen 502.0. Amsoil has three oils that meet the specification. Two of them are 540, and we have this one here, which is a 040. And uh, it's the colder temperatures here in the northern climate. Uh, we're going to be using the 0W40 because it gives you a broader temperature range in the cold. And uh, we're going to be using a, a CarQuest filter. It's a cartridge type filter on this vehicle. And uh, that's what we'll be using for the uh, oil. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> Amsoil has an online product guide and if you go to my fluidcapacity.com website uh, this gives you a breakdown that, that uh, of all the fluids that Amsoil recommends here's the three car formulas or the uh, engine oil formulas I should say it goes into the uh, differentials transfer case um, and go down here it's got the oil filter the wicks number uh, it's also got the capacities for each of the cavities your engine uh, this one holds about 5.8 quarts so you're going to need about six quarts to do the oil change um, it's also got the uh, torques for the old drain plug, like your engine old drain plug is right here, 22 foot-pounds, transfer case, and then on the back side here, I printed this off, uh, your differential is right at 11 foot-pounds for the drain plug. So it gives you all those specifications, you can print that off for each one of your vehicles and uh, make servicing them a whole lot easier. So we're going to get started with this and be back with it. Okay, we're underneath the vehicle. And uh, we're towards the rear of the, uh, the transaxle engine right here. This is kind of an, uh, an engineering issue that I have with, uh, with how they set this up. They've got a piece of plastic right here that goes up inside to hold this to this piece of metal right above it. They left no way to take out the center. There's a little dowel or a round piece in the center. They left no way to pull it out. So the only way that you can get this to release I take a little uh, screwdriver here and you can push it straight up, okay? And when you push it, what it does, you heard it probably just pop in there, but it goes up inside the metal housing, okay? Now we can get this out now, that little piece, but that's only half of it. And you can see it, it pushes out as that pin, that dowel goes up the center, it pushes that out and holds this secure. And I'll show you how to get that little uh, plastic dowel out once we get this piece down. I just use some compressed air and blow it out. So that's kind of the hardest part of this whole thing. And then up front we have one more spot that's a little hard to get at. And we'll go to that next. Okay, the next hardest one is right up here underneath the front bumper. There's one screw right here that they really left not a whole lot of room to get in to take it out. And it's a T25. In fact, there's 11 of these T25 screws you got to take out to drop down this piece of plastic to get at the oil filter and the bottom of the pan to drain it. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so we'll go to the next ones and show you where they're at. Okay, we've taken this one out here up front. That's that T25. Now we're going to go over here on the passenger side, and we got one right here. We got another one right here, and there's another one right here. There's three there, and then we go over here to the driver's side, and it's the exact same setup. There's going to be one right here, one right here, and one right here. And those again are all T25s. Okay, and then we go back further. See if I can get a good shot of this. We go towards the rear, and there's one right here, and there's another one right here. You can see right there is your catalytic converter, so you can just kind of see where they're at. Okay, and then we go on the other side of the catalytic converters. There's another one right here, and there's another one right here. Okay, and then what's left are three. And we'll look at the passenger side here. These here are a T45, Torx 45. There's three of those. There's one here. And there's one kind of in the middle of this uh, plastic panel. And there's one over here more towards, flip this around, go over here towards the driver's side. Okay. 
and that'll allow you to bring this whole piece of plastic down and out. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll film taking those all out. Okay, now remember that first piece that we pushed out, there's a round, a round keeper that uh, has no way to pull it out. You have to push it up inside. And what it does, right here's the hole where that went into to hold that plastic up, okay? So that gets pushed in to hold the plastic, and then you put that little cylinder piece up the center, and that holds the, uh, that pushes out on these little wedges here to keep it tight. So what ends up happening, that little cylinder gets pushed up inside, and now it's up kind of tucked in this housing here that you can't get your fingers in. Now what I've done is there's a hole right here and if you take compressed air into that hole you should be able to blow it right out of this big hole right here. It'll blow it right around and blow it right out. Oh, I seen it bounce back there. Yep, I can feel it. There it is. Okay, so Again, this is the engineering behind uh, this little cap thing right here. There's no way to get that out when it's beyond flush other than push it in. And like I say, if you blow air in there, you should be able to get it over here where you can get a hold of it and or blow it out. My guess is if your vehicle has been through a quick lube or it's been through the dealership, they probably didn't even bother putting this back in. But I'm just showing you this, if you want to put it back in, what you have to do to get that little plastic piece back out. Okay, the drain plug's right here on the, on the drain pants, an 18 millimeter. So we're going to take that on out. Okay, we're going to take the oil filter down. It's a hex on here, and it's a 36 millimeter. You can also use an inch and 7 16 standard size. It'll work great as well. So we're going to pop that down. Going to be some oil coming at you. So you can kind of decide if you want to let it drain or if you want to just take it down. And all you have to do is grab that filter, pull it off, and that leaves you with just the housing. If there's anything in the housing, you can go ahead and clean that up. We'll put on a new O-ring, comes with the filter, and we'll start going back together and be back with you. Okay, this thing sits upside down on the engine like this. And you can see right in here, kind of at the end of my finger, there's a little streak, and it's it's actually just wear metals, fine metal in there, you know, from the break-in, I suppose. This thing only has about 8,000 miles on it. So you're going to want to clean that out before you put it back in. And uh, we'll go ahead and dump out what oil is left. And you can use, uh, like, a brake clean solvent or uh, starting fluid. If you use starting fluid, just make sure you stay away from any sparks or flames or you'll have fire. But uh, wipe out as much as you can. And then we'll take, uh, spray it out. I'm done with that, I'm going to blow it out. Okay, so now it's nice and clean, dry, got all that uh, fine wear metal out that settled out from that initial break in. And then we're going to take uh, and get this o-ring off and uh, I'll lube up a new one and put it on we'll get back with you when you do that.
Okay, we're going to take off this O-ring right here and replace it because a new one comes with a filter. You can either use an O-ring pick or if you've got a small straight edge screwdriver, you can go in and get that up and off. And then before you put the new O-ring on, you will need to put some oil on it or uh, grease. And I choose grease. It just stays put better than the oil. You don't have to worry about it dripping in your face while you're under there. But the biggest thing is you get some lubrication on that o-ring so that you don't nick it going in because if you nick it you're going to have a leak and problems. Okay, so you just get a nice film of it so it's all uh, slick around the edge. And we'll put that new o-ring on and get it into the groove. Just like that. And like I say, if you want to put a little more grease on right there at the edge, you can. It won't hurt a thing. Okay. So that's ready to go back in. And now we're going to put this filter on. And that just snaps in just like that. There's an O-ring right here. You can put a little bit of grease on there if you want to. There's probably enough oil up in the housing where you wouldn't have to. But now this is ready to go back in. So we'll go underneath and uh, show you putting that back in. Okay, on a note here, there's also a plug if you want to drain out this housing before you take this off. When you're changing the oil, you can do that as well. You can see it's a hex there. Um, it can save you some of that mess of running down around the outside, like when we took it off here the first time. So we're ready to go up with this, and uh, got to push that hose to the side just a little bit, and get it started on here nice and straight. Should go up in nice and smooth. You'll feel it get a little bit, a uh, little bit of resistance as it hits that O-ring. And you want 25 newton meters, which is about 225 inch pounds. And we've got a torque wrench here. We'll torque it. Right there it is. Okay. So that's it for the filter. Next thing we're going to do is put in the drain plug. Okay. We'll put the drain plug back in. This drain plug is again an 18 millimeter. And it calls for 22 foot pounds of torque, which is about 265 inch pounds. So we've got the torque wrench set. There we go. That's done. Okay, this thing holds uh, 5.8 quarts, and again, we're using Amsoil. European car formula meets and exceeds the specifications for uh, the Volkswagen here. And uh, it's a 0W40. The fill is right here at the uh, front of the engine and take that off and they've got a baffle right there it covers about probably two-thirds of the hole i don't know if you can see it very well but uh you can see right here this whole side here you can't get a funnel on so it's going to have to be a smaller neck funnel i got one here that i use for my transmission service and i think that'll work just fine but uh we'll go ahead and fill it up and uh, then we'll go ahead and put the bottom cover on okay we checked the oil level on this and i went into the book here the owner's manual I put in the 5.8 quarts, and I was still just about a quart low. So I went to the book, and I looked it up here. This is a V6. It's calling for about 5.8 quarts. Um, it looks to me like we're just shy of 7 quarts on this, so I don't know if the book is off. Um, the fluid capacity guide says the same thing, 5.8 quarts. So just want to give you a heads up, and I'll show you here. I've got the full right at 7 quarts in it. I'm going to pull this dipstick out. We can see we're right here at the top of where it calls for in the book. It's about right there where the end of my thumb is. So it's looking like about you're going to need seven quarts. So just a heads up, the book is saying 5.8. Fluid capacity guy is saying 5.8. And you're going to need about seven. So just a heads up on that. Okay, we need to reset the service reminder display that's on the dash. And the way you do that is we have the ignition switch switched off. It's on page 32 of the manual on this, uh, on this vehicle. And then uh, there's a button up here on the dash. It's right here. It's got zero, 00 on it. Okay? And it says to press and hold that down. And then, without putting your foot on the brake, touch your, your engine start and you'll get your, uh, all your accessories to light up. And then you release that button up here on the dash once that happens. Okay. 
and then the following uh, message will come up, reset oil service. When that happens, we push this button again, and that will reset it. Hold it until it resets. So we're going to go ahead and try that and see how it all works. Okay, we'll push the button up here in the dash. And here we go. Okay. Reset oil service. Okay. There it is. Service interval was reset. Okay, as you go back together with this piece of plastic after you've checked everything for leaks and you've checked the oil. Now there's pieces here, you can see there's one goes on top, this one goes on the bottom. It's kind of a sandwich type thing, back and forth, zigzag. And the center right here is this uh, speed nut for that, that bolt right there in the center, that hard one to get out. So what you're going to want to do is the ones that go above have a tab on, except for these end ones. But there's one, two of them here that have tabs on and the end ones don't. So what you want to do is make sure you've got it sandwiched right as you go up in and eyeball them. This one's up above, this one's below, this one's above, this one's below, above, below, above, below, above. And then just push it straight in, just like that. And you'll see the hole right here for that speed nut where you can put that screw in. And then I've got one of the larger bolts here ready to go, kind of back here in the middle. And that'll kind of hold everything up for me. Just get that started. And then we'll begin the process of putting these bolts all back in under here. So we'll get started with that, be back with you. Okay, here's that little piece that we had such trouble getting out before, if you want to put that back in. Just snap it up in the hole, push it straight up in. And like I said, it doesn't really matter which end you put in the way it looks on this. Um, but push that up in the center of it, just like that. And tap it in. You decide how far you want to tap it in. If you want to go all the way and have to push it through again, you might be able to get a hold of the needle nose, but I wouldn't bank on it. I'm just going to put it back in the way it was. And that was flush. Okay. And then these bigger bolts here, um, those I just hit with the uh, with the impact. And you want to get them good and snug. They got some Loctite on them, some blue Loctite, a little bit. Just get them up and get them snug. Don't get crazy with them, otherwise you'll strip them out. And the small ones, I'm putting those up. All they are is just almost like a, uh, almost like a sheet metal screw. Okay, they're not like a machine screw, but more like a, a sheet metal screw. When you go to put those in, they're going to be going into a metal speed nut. And again, just just get them snug. You don't want to over tighten them. Otherwise, you'll start twisting out the plastic. So just snug so they can't come loose. So we're going to go right ahead and put all these in, and uh, that'll be pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.